Hello, it's me, Brett Delane. Welcome to physics. Uh, today we're going to do constant velocity. Okay, so here I have a prop. I was going to make an animation, but I said, hey, no, I'm going to just make a prop. So here's my car. And it's going to be driving along. Man, look at that. It's driving along. Just moving at a constant speed. So one of the things that we do in physics is to try to uh, make models. We want to make a model that describes this thing. So then we can use that model. That model could be an actual model. This is, this is a model of an actual car. Look. See, I drew it. Look at that. But maybe a more useful model would be to build a mathematical model. So let's say that we want to, uh, we have some measurements here. So I'm just going to put this at zero. And these are in, um, let's say, 10 meters, 20, 30, 40, negative 10. This is the x-axis. I'm starting off here in one dimension, uh, just because it's going to make things easier. We'll go into multiple dimensions later. Okay, so let's say, let's say, suppose that I want to describe the motion of this car as it moves along this x-axis. Okay, I'm going to, let's say it starts right here, and then every second it moves 10 meters. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I wonder if I'm actually moving at a constant velocity. I think it's pretty close. Okay, so at t equals 0, let's put, let's make a data table. t x so zero negative 30 meters and this is in seconds there are units and units do indeed matter and then we're at one second negative 20 and then we have negative i'm sorry two seconds i do make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes just scratch it out no big deal negative 10 3 0 4 10 5 20 like that and it goes on so now let's suppose that I wanted to make a graph of this motion this will be time and this will be position yeah I had to think for a second in meters so it starts down here at t equals zero it starts at negative 30 Let's see, negative, let's see, let's see, zero, negative 10, negative 20, 10, 20, okay. And then this will be one, two, three, four, five. So we can actually put these data points on here. So I'll start right here. And the next one, I'm at one second at negative 20. And then I'm at two seconds at negative 10. And then I'm at three seconds at zero. Okay. And you see it makes a nice straight line. So, right there. So I just made a model. I modeled the motion of this moving car. Just like that. Are there too many shadows here? I don't know. Well, let's just move on. Okay, so this graph is a model of the motion of the car. And so you can see it's a straight line. It has a slope. Which would be... The change in x over the change in time, because it's rise over run. So in in physics, we write this as uh, delta as the change in. So that means I could take any two points in this graph. Let's take this one and that one. I'm just going to be and I'm going to find use those two points to find the slope. So that would be let's call this uh, point uh, zero one two three four five, and that's the time too. So it's going to be x. 5 minus x3 over the, the change in time, which is going to be t5 minus t3. Okay, so let me move the paper up a little bit. And so now I can actually calculate that, and it's going to be x5 is 20 minus 0 meters over, uh, that's going to be 5 seconds minus 3. So it's going to be 
20 meters over two seconds or 10 meters per second. So what we just did was to calculate the average velocity in one dimension. What do you think about that? Okay, so we can use this. So let's say that I have average velocity is delta x over delta t. Now, I used a particular x and a particular a particular change in x and a particular change in time to find the velocity. Uh, let me write this. V average equals x over t. That is wrong. Do not do that. That is not true. Okay. Now, there's some cases that it may be equivalent to being true, but it's not actually true. So don't, don't do that. It's the change in x or the change in time. And you can see here at x equals zero, if I go back to that graph, if I just do x over t, then this, if I take uh, x of zero, t of three, I get zero over three or zero meters per second. That's not the velocity, okay? So that's why I did this example to start at negative 30, just so you could see how that works. But in general, if I know the average velocity, and in this case, also the average velocity didn't change, Okay, well, which we will change it later. So let me write this out in uh, any two terms. V average equals x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. So we like to use subscripts in physics just to uh, denote particular things. It, it may get confusing in a while, but you'll get used to it. Um, in fact, let me actually write this as x2 minus x1 over delta t. Now, if I multiply both sides of the equation by delta t, then I get x2 minus x1 equals v average delta t. Now, I'm going to add x1 to both sides, and then I get x2 equals x1 plus v average delta t. This is a very, very useful equation. This tells me if I know the average velocity and I know the change in time and where it started, I can find out where it's going to be later. I can predict where it's going to be. So let's do that. So in my graph, I only went up to five seconds. But where will, the, where will it be where at t equals seven seconds? Okay, well, let's say um, I need to pick a change in time and a change in position, and I can do anything, right? Let's just, let's just say t equals zero. Okay, so I'm going to say x7 equals x0 plus v average delta t. So x7 is x0, which is negative 30 meters, plus v average, which is 10 meters per second times the change in time, which is going to be 7 seconds minus 0 seconds. So I get, and this one you can do in your head, I get negative 30 meters uh, plus 7 times 10 is 70 meters. It's 70 meters per second times 7 seconds. So I get meters. When you add two quantities, it's important to realize that they have to have the same units or you can't add them. But now I have negative 30 plus 70, and I get equals 40 meters. That's where it's going to be at x. I can write that as x7, except a function, x of 7. Okay. Okay, so that's your very basics of the constant velocity. There's so much more that we can do. But I think I will stop there, trying to try to keep each video under 10 minutes, and then we'll see what happens. So we'll do I'll do another example of constant velocity on the next episode. And then we're going to start doing uh, numerical calculations. That's where we're going to write computer code to solve problems. It's going to be great. Trust me. Okay. See you next time.